Hello everyone, this is Robin Carter with Robin's Creations, and as promised, I'm here to share my uh, second and final of my Scallop Contour class cards that we'll be making uh, this coming up week. So if you are currently a subscriber of mine, I want to thank you for subscribing, and if you're new to my channel, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe down below, and if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Alright, so yes. Uh, not yesterday, but a few days ago, I shared the first of three of the six cards that we'll be making at our class. Um, it was a mini slimline card, which you're uh, interested in learning how to make this. Check out the first video. The only changes I made here was I decided I like the uh, buds done in just fresh phrasia and not the evening evergreen. So I did finish those cards. And then I shared this card, which was inspired on Pinterest. I made it exactly the same way, pretty much. And then this, this card. The only thing I changed here whoop, were the colors. That was upside down. So I did finish those cards, and they're ready to go out to someone. So always, you want to decorate your envelopes, um, since you can personalize them that way. Okay, let's see. Yep, and I did those two. Alright, so let's get started with our next three cards. Um, first, I'll share with you what we'll be making. It's this card. And I like doing this on the envelope for that card. Here's the supplies for that card. And then... I've got all my stuff over here ready to go. I'll be sharing this card, and this looks funny, but it does continue from some buds I put on the back. I put two on the front there, and then this will be our third card to create. Whoops! And so that's how I decorated that envelope. So let's get started with this card first. So. And this is uh, the 6x6 designer series paper of the in colors. It's currently available in the annual catalog. And um, for my class, I ran out of pink for everyone. So uh, I decided to go with the, the evening evergreen color for my second sample of this card. So it takes a five and a quarter by four inch piece of designer series paper and you could choose whichever side you like the best. I tend to like this side and then of course one of the second largest from the contour dies right here. And then I pre-cut three uh, flowers that we'll be putting on this. So to begin with I wanted to add some splatter to the background and on this card it looks like I did uh, soft succulent and I think I'll do the same just because I think evening evergreen would be um, too dark so let me get out my Stampin Pierce mat to help with a photopolymer give it some cushion I already mounted the splatter stamp that comes in the stamp set right here and so we'll start with some splatter let me grab my ink Okay, sorry about that. I should have had that ready to go. So I'm just going to add a little bit because the cover, uh, the flowers will be covering up most of it. So again, with our uh, foam pads, you just want to barely tap, not smush <laughs> into those. So I'm just going to create some splatter. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a tickle in my throat. And here, we'll go ahead and just fill it up with two here. Okay, so that's done. So I can get my chamois. So this is the chamois. Now, you're probably wondering, yes, it comes this big. But I cut it in half, and then I cut this half off again. It just helps with, uh, especially when I use the Stamparatus, which we'll be using in a minute. Okay, so 
Now let's move on to the flowers. So yesterday uh, in my cards I shared how to make a template so that you can uh, get the most out of your paper when cutting the dies. So again I did one position. That was a mistake one. So I positioned a sheet of thick whisper white paper in the corner, stamped it, and then you use a template. I believe I store, and I recommended you store them in your, uh, in with your die so you can use them over and over. So if you want to learn how we did this so that you can then just go and cut as many blank uh, flowers as possible and get the most out of your paper check out the first video I kind of went into detail and did an example of that yesterday so um, I don't want to take the time to uh, do that today and we'll just get right to the cards so as you saw I pre did these and also since my last class was very long I went ahead and did this so I have my little goodies box that I put extra supplies in so that if I mess up I can have more ready to go. So I think I have another flower in here. He's probably upside down. There he is. Okay, so what you'll do for this card is you will stamp three of them using just Memento black ink, okay, to look like this. And then I took the flower fill-in stamp, which is this stamp to fill in the flowers. And as you can see, I'll hold these up a little closer, they're not meant to fill the flowers exactly. Again, these are to give more of a watercolor look. And then I colored these in with an Evening Evergreen blends pen that I have. But you could easily use your blender pen and some Evening Evergreen ink and fill them in as well. I think on this card I used the darkest of them and this one I used the lightest of them. Okay, so I'm going to move this aside since I've already shown that technique and we'll get right to assembling our card. So maybe I can actually finish these. So here is a card base that I created just cutting a, a piece of thick basic white with um, scoring it at four and a quarter and cutting it at five and a half. And this is what I like to call a book fold card. So I'm going to grab another card base because I thought I saw some uh, an extra score mark there. So let me grab another one. I have a bunch of them made. It's what I do when I'm not feeling very creative, but I just make some card bases ahead of time. Here's another thing to remember. And then, I don't know if you can see that very well, but if your card bases after you fold them has a little bit of hangover, you'll want to make the longest piece be the top part. One, it helps the person to open it, and two, they're not like I can see part of the inside of the card. So I just think it looks better this way. So here's our Evening Evergreen. And I'm still using a snail from that we used to carry in the catalog. I do sometimes like to use liquid glue for some wiggle room. But I'm going to give this a try. So one way I find it easiest is before you actually press it down. Look at your corners left and right. That looks pretty good in the center there for me, so I'm going to do that. Okay, and then the next one I'm going to do is, well, what happened? I bet it's still on the pierce mat. Here it is. I was like, what happened to this? So we stamped. Okay. The last time I adhered this flat to the card and the flowers flat on the card, this thing, um, I don't know, what do you think? I could raise this up and do those flat. I think I'm going to do that this time. So before we get, begin, I want to 
glue my cards to this. And I like to use my silicone mat when I use liquid glue, which is, excuse me, right here. I have a funny story to tell. So I was getting ready to do this video a couple hours ago and I looked at my dies and a die was missing. I mean, it happens to me all the time. And so I started cleaning up my room, putting everything where it needs to go. I've looked and looked. I probably looked for two hours. And I finally found it stuck on the magnet on the bottom of my stamparatus. Um, and I, I was relieved. But anyway, it was just been one of those days. All right, so let's, let's put these on here. I think I'm going to do them in the same order. I think I want the pink on top this time. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to get my Tombow liquid glue that I also have in a skinny tip glue bottle. I just squeeze it in here because I find it easier to apply. So I'm going to start with the pale papaya one. I'm just going to put some liquid glue and that didn't take too long. I thought it might take a while because I didn't have it upside down. All right. And then we'll glue the pink one down. It's polished pink. And this one was done in Fresh Freesia. So Anyway, it did at least accomplish getting my room back in order, so all was not a loss. And I'm okay with that bud hanging off, so it makes a nice bouquet. So I'm going to get my dimensionals, which I store in, and this is an old case from when we used to have all the stamps wood mounted. Yes, I've been doing this for probably about 15 years I've been a demonstrator. Maybe a few more. For the longest time, I was just a uh, hobby dealer, not a dealer, a hobby demonstrator. And I was excited when I found a few friends that enjoyed doing this. And so we now have a regular monthly class that meets at my home. And for my dimensionals, I find that this was a half of one that a half works pretty well. So I trim these right down the middle and then use half. So I can use a few more. Yet, as you can see, that only used really three dimensionals, but it covers the whole section. So I'll just peel these off. I know a lot of people use their take your pick tool to get these off. I find my fingernail works fine. I don't have I, I kind of go natural with the nails. Anytime I paint them, it seems like it just chips off. And so, all right. So now I just kind of eyeball this. That looks good. And put that on there with dimensionals. So I do kind of like that. Because this leaf is so tiny, I may have just got my head in the camera there. I'm going to glue that one down so that it doesn't get caught when you're putting it in and out of the envelope. I think that one's fine. Okay, so I think I'm still okay. I like, I was afraid I wouldn't like it as much with the evening evergreen, but I think it really gives it a rich color. I'm going to lift this up gently. I think it needs to be slightly shifted to the right. Okay, now for the, um, Greeting, I decided I didn't like that um, stitched rectangle and thought instead this is from the Ornate Labels Frames. And I've already stamped that and, and the, I used the Stamparatus to make a, another template for that greeting. And that way I was able to use it and my customers can, if they like that sentiment, they can uh, easily add that. So, yeah, I didn't like how far that one went over. And even though I stamped the sentiment on the right, I thought a smaller greeting would be fine. 
So I'm going to adhere it straight to the raised up die cut. I should have set my glue upside down, but it's coming. Okay. And I'm just going to put this right on the edge, hanging off a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to get some ribbon. I believe I have the Evening Evergreen. Same sheer ribbon. Um, I, do. I do. So I'm just going to create a hand done bow. And I hope this goes better than yesterday. <laughs> Making bows while you do a video is always a challenge. Hoping, I think we're supposed to warm up a little next week. It has been cold here in Flower Mound the last couple of days. All right, I do like a teeny bow, and I can trim the tails later. I don't know why that one's. Well, you can always use either side as well. Okay, we're going to stick with that. And once I put the glue dot on there, it'll be fine. So let's see, I had it going that way. That tail a little longer. Let me trim it off a little bit. Okay, and if you don't squeeze it all the way, it'll lay flat, more flat. So I'm going to put that right there with a glue dot. Now I've collected these glue dots through my paper pumpkin subscription, but they also sell regular glue dots in the online store, which if you do not have a demonstrator and would like to place an order with me, I would greatly appreciate it. I do have a hostess code that I'll share in the description box at the end of this video. Well, it's stuck to my scissors, that's not good. Okay, but again, I think we just need one. I can't get rid of that tickle. That's another thing that happens when you go live. Or actually, I'm not live. I'm just recording the video. So, there is that video. It just needs a few blings, which I will add later. And, of course, I will probably decorate my envelope like this for the recipient to receive. And this one is all done with the logo on the back. And so, we'll move on to our next card. I'll put these in my extra supply box. All right, so I hope you like that card. I'd like to know your comments and <clears throat> what you think about it. The next card we're going to do is, is fairly simple. It is just one of the uh, flowers. Now this one I did not pre-color for you. So I wanted to color this one in all the way. And so, just to show a different technique, I was gonna use my blends. So let me grab that color. All right, I stored them in this tight container box. And these are kind of some that over flowed from my other boxes. Let's see. That's Highland Heather. I should have had this ready to go to, but we know how that goes. Her. And that's Blackberry. Okay, sorry about that. Let me look good in the box. Okay, and I think I found out I actually did not have the uh, Fresh Freesia, but I have last year's um, Purple Posy ones. So, and they, they, I think that's what I used here, and they tend to work pretty well. I'm going to get a piece of scrap paper. Where is scrap paper when you need it? And just kind of test out the color. So I think that's pretty good. This is the dark one. So I'm going to use the 
broader tip brush. And on your blends, you want to be careful not to, this will dry lighter. And if I decide I don't like it, I'll look for the lighter one. So just be gentle with your brush tip. I tend to color it from the side. And I could have used the light and dark and done some shading, but I just wanted some simple coloring. Now, I didn't color this leaf, leaf but what do y'all think about coloring that one? Okay, we will go with some of my dark. That's light, this is dark. Let's go with the light. Um, maybe dark to give it a little more color. Again, be very gentle with your brush tip. You just have to barely touch it to your paper. I'm going to call that a leaf, not a bud. And just fill that in. I think that'll look a little better on the card than blank. It is interesting when you start making a second one for class, things that you see that you didn't see at first, and then you can give your, um, everybody at class can decide what they like the best. So again, I did splatter on this one, and I did it in Memento Black Ink. Let me get that out. And here's my splatter. So I'm just gonna fill in kind of in the center. I hope that's not needing re-ink soon. It's, it's good. Just kind of going down like that. Now the other thing I did, which is always, in, you can do this or not, but I have the blending brushes, which I love. So I wanted to add a little splash of color so it wasn't so plain. So I have ones that I create, uh, I use one brush for each basic color family. So like a blues, this is my blue one. I have one for reds, oranges, purples, greens, etc. So, and this is pool party. So I'm gonna turn around and grab my ink. Be off camera for just a second. Okay, here's my pool party. Now in the inks that I had, the old style, I didn't replace them. I'm just using the old ones. Now to get started with this, what I found best is to start it off on something kind of laminated so I laminated a grid half part of a grid sheet and I see how the ink is it's pretty light might be time to re-ink this pad and for this I'm going to start kind of up high where that flower will cover it in case it's too dark so this is turning out darker than the other one and that's okay okay I'm going to let that be See how it goes with the flower. I think I'm going to add a little down here. Okay, I like that. And you can do this as light or dark as you like. And I would just keep coming off of the ink that's remaining if you were doing more than one. Okay, so before we adhere this with dimensionals, we want to put our sentiment on there. So let me pull out the Stamparatus. That stuck to that, so set this aside for the moment. Okay, I have the greeting over here, and my guess is I don't have it lined up for, maybe I do. I did that in the left hand corner. No, I do not. So let me take it down one, see where that is. That's gonna work. So I'm gonna take my magnet, hold that in place, check again where it's gonna go. Going a little lower. Okay, and my Memento ink. Okay. Just 
just let the ink set in for a second. Any of you guys ever lose your stuff and look for hours and hours and it's in a very obvious place? I think I spend more time doing that half the time. Although I, I think I'm getting better. I try to, if I'm not going to put it away, put it on a magnet sheet or something so that I know where they are. I may have to realign that for class. That might be a little crooked, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that's good. Okay, and so now we're going to put our flower on with dimensionals. So I'm just going to put a couple here. And I may even cut a little bit of this one to go on the leaf. I wonder if I cut one of these in half. A half of a half. Just a teeny tiny for the leaf. And then I'll put the other half of that on this leaf. Okay, let's see how that's going to stand. So i got to move this one over. It's showing. Okay. Well, of course, he's not going to stay anymore. So we'll cut another little piece. That went flying. <laughs> so, here we go. Oops, yeah, I'll get back in camera for you. Sorry, I'm just taking off the paper. Nothing exciting. Okay, and I'm going to do this flower across like that. Now, for the purple posy paper, um, I didn't have one in here ready to go, but I already had one stamped black, so I'll use that. You can see as it dried, it kind of did well, and I think the color matches good enough. But for this background, I stamped a few of the flower images from the stamp set. I just used fresh freesia ink and stamped about three or so. I would do that, but I don't want to take my uh, stamp off the plate because it's all lined up to go for when uh, my class participants need to. I could do it like this, but I think that would be kind of silly. And plus, since it's so such a flat, I'm not sure how the hinges would do. So I'm going to ignore that part and not put my uh, label on here yet. I will do it with dimensionals and add a few, uh, it looks like I just added one rhinestone and I think that's cute to give it a little detail. So before and after didn't change anything. Of course, I guess you don't have to do the flower if you don't want to, or you could emboss this sheet if you prefer an embossed look. Okay, so that's that card, and on the envelopes, I will put that flower in Memento ink again. All right, let me clean up my station a little bit. It's getting lots of things out. All right, put up my brush. Although I do usually like to clear it off on a sheet of scrap paper. Just so that the next time I go to use it, if I'm using a different blue, it will be as clear as possible. <coughs> There's that tickle again. Okay, we're down to our final card. And this one, again, would use just the stamp off of the stamp apparatus. And I like how that envelope matched. And so in all the other cards I did, I didn't do black as the outline. I did it in whatever color I was going to fill it in with. And I thought this black added a little uh, punch to the card. So um, what I did here was I gave her one a piece of basic white that they will stamp randomly across the, the flower in uh, Memento black ink and we will fill it in with pale papaya and again this is not meant to be an exact thing 
but when we put them on the blocks let me find my plate that has the flour on there there is a direction wash I can show you on the case that might be easier I think they actually have it printed here in the way you should color so when you put it on your block you may want to put this one at the top and this one at the top or bottom it doesn't matter that way you have an idea of how it's supposed to go when you stamp your flower and if it helps you to do one individually because these you may want to turn in different directions then do memento black and then color it in and then I did use the splatter and I put it around the flowers I didn't care if it went over the flower but if you don't want splatter on your flower you could use an extra flower that we cut um, yesterday when we cut I think it was 17 flowers you could just use one of the blank ones I've got one here in my little extra bucket and cover up your flower when you go to do your stamping if you didn't want the splatter on there all right and then since I um, yesterday we used one with a scallop and again I found it easiest just to cut it out of a piece of uh, probably one and a half paper and I have a better tip than I gave yesterday you learn stuff as you go along for getting it straight so before I told you we'll kind of line it here and if you need to trim it up well I don't know why I didn't think of this yesterday or earlier it just came in my brain today and a lot of you are probably like duh you may already know this but after you cut it this is gonna be straight right here so I know I need this to be uh, five and a quarter inches long so I can just line this up the scallop part to the five and a quarter and it looks like that's gonna be pretty close to that side close enough so now I know that will be straight. So a lot of you have probably already thought of that. That just came to my brain today. I kind of learn as I go along and uh, that will be that card. So again, I don't want to take my flower off and randomly stamp them. So here's what I did to conserve paper also. So this is two and a half. And this is 275. So if you're making more than one of these and you're cutting up your cardstock, 275 will go into the 11 four times. And so then you're just cutting it at the long wise at five and a quarter, and then you can get four out of that at 275. And then your white, same thing, you can get four with a little left over. So I do that and I kind of cheat now that I know this is straight and I cheat with my DSP and I just cut um, I believe a one inch strip so I would glue this on there first without I can go ahead and do that this is my card base yep I'm gonna use that side because I'm gonna cover up that little mark you know what let me get another one Plenty of card bases, no need. I can use that for templates or something. So here's one I already did. Found my bone folder that I couldn't find yesterday. All right, okay, that one, it's about the same, but I feel like I can catch the card front. So I'm gonna make that the front or the top. All right, I'm gonna use my liquid adhesive glue. Y'all are probably like, it's over there. It was funny because I had to get that die out when I was finishing my other cards because I couldn't found, find one of the flowers that I made on the video. And I said, as soon as I cut this extra flower, I'm going to find it. And yes, I did. I found it. So the next thing you'll do is take your scallop and you can put it however you want to. Just 
and I cut that too much, didn't I? Well, I'll have to make another one of those. Things happen. Yeah, I'm going to cut another one. I don't want that one to go on there. But anyway, just kind of eye how much scallop you want. I'm probably going to have as much as possible. You can take it up. You can take it up as high as your GSP goes, just so it doesn't show. And that way you can show more of your pretty paper. And then you'll have less scallop. You're probably like, why didn't you stamp that? Finish it. But I will do that when we take it off of the stamparatus so I don't have to realign it because class is Monday. Okay, so um, before you glue this piece on there though, you will want to do your ribbon tying. And I will share this online. I don't remember who I got this tip from, but it's a ribbon saving technique. And I'm trying to remember what size I need for that. It may be this medicine bottle, my fancy glue sticker upper. And I just put these in to kind of weigh down the bottom. Okay, so you take your ribbon. I feel like I'm backwards. It doesn't matter. Alright, so take it around the bottle. Tie your bow. Oh, fingers today. And I take this over the top. Why are you twisted? Oh, wait, that's making a knot. I don't want to make a knot. I want to make a little bow. So for the little bow, I bring the bottom piece up and then I take this around and then pull it through. Okay, and I pulled mostly with the one that has all the tag on there. So see, I haven't cut it from my spool yet. It is still attached. So now I'm going to fussy with the bows to get them like I like it. So a little pull and a little read. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I'm going to cut off my tail. Now take it off the bottle. And I hope this fits. So see, I didn't cut it off the ribbon until just then. So then you have your circle. And I want it more on the left. So I'm going to cut it more that way. And that way, as you can see, all I have to do is tape that on the back. And I've saved quite a bit of ribbon. And it also was easier to make the bow on the bottle versus trying to fussy it on my card. So I did that one better than yesterday. Yesterday I was struggling. So again, don't start messing with it too much like I'm doing now because I have pulled it completely off and then you get two pieces of bow or ribbon. So then you have to remember which one is your one to put on the card and which one is not. Okay, done with that. Stop. And so I will put that on after I stamp mine in class on Monday. I've lost some length. How did I do that earlier? It fit good. But I'll still make it work. It'll just be a tight snug. Okay, how'd you like that technique? I hope, I hope I've taught you a few things today. This video is a lot <clears throat> less time than last time. Last time was a long video, and if you watched all of it, I truly appreciate it. Hope you learned some things along the way. And again, thank you for joining me during this class. And if you uh, would be interested in more details about this, I will post still pictures on my blog, which will be in the detailed description below once I uh, update my blog with all these cards. I'm guessing it'll probably be Tuesday or Wednesday before I'm able to get all that done since I'm preparing for class. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment and have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.